Hello everyone, welcome back to the homestead. It is early fall and the days are full for us. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of harvesting. Yesterday the children dug up our yams. It wasn't the best harvest of yams we have ever had, but Esther came in super excited with a giant yam. So we've been curing those in our root cellar. We also just got our first harvest of winter squash, a butternut squash, cured and put up in the pantry. Uh, the other day, Esther Pye and I were able to get all our jams and jellies made. We made three different kinds, strawberry jam, mixed berry jelly, and grape jelly. Uh, pretty much the favorite of the family was the strawberry. I've been using Pomona's pectin. If you haven't heard of that, I highly recommend it. It's a great pectin that allows you to make jams and jellies without all the sugar and it's got great recipes right there in the box for using honey or for using um, no sweetener at all or maybe just some stevia. So I really enjoy being able to make our jams and jellies without a ton of sugar and they just taste so much better. You get that nice fruit taste, not overwhelmed by all the sugar. We've also been working on our backyard. It's just been wild for years. Uh, we put a big compost center back here and then just yesterday the whole family got back here and we've started shaping this backyard into what we hope it to be. There's going to be eventually a pergola with a rose going over it, a little bench to sit in underneath. Uh, we put in another fruit tree, an apricot and a little comfrey next to it. There's going to be another one back here as well and then lots of just little beds that we can put perennial flowers and herbs, uh, possibly even some annual vegetables eventually. I am personally really excited about this little Park apricot tree and we have another one just like it that's going on the opposite side of this backyard. Uh, it, these trees are being planted in memory of my grandpa who passed a couple years ago. He was a farmer at heart. He grew up on a farm in Ohio and was there as long as he possibly could. He finally ended up having to go to a factory in the city. But even in the city, everywhere they lived, uh, he planted food all around the house. He always had fruit trees, strawberries, and squash, all kinds of things growing around his house. That's one of my fondest memories of going and visiting my grandparents is getting to wander around in his gardens and enjoy the fresh apricots and peaches and things that he had growing. So I'm super happy to have this to have this apricot in the ground at last. It's been sitting in a pot for a while, so hopefully it will be happy and provide lots of apricots to this family in the future. And then just a lot of other projects are going on right now. Still working on our milking barn. Uh, we've got plans pretty much complete now for our greenhouse and it's going to also be our duck house. So lots of exciting things going on on the homestead. But for today, we're gonna do another farm to table meal. It's a meal that I make often when I have leftover mashed potatoes. Today I don't have leftover mashed potatoes, so I'm just gonna make mashed potatoes. And um, we're using our red potatoes that we dug up early summer. And then I like to add in a bunch of eggs and make what I call mashed potato patties um, or egg patties. You could call it what you want, but it's basically just mashed potatoes, eggs, and then I like to add a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic, and a tiny bit of rosemary. I'll also often have leftover meat that I'll put in with the mashed potato patties, sometimes chicken, uh, some leftover taco meat, just anything. Really, you can put whatever you want in these patties and they're a favorite for our family, especially Nady. He absolutely loves them. Today we've got a bonus. We actually have a silly goose that's laying eggs again. This is not the season for geese to lay eggs. But anyway, we've got a couple of goose eggs to add to the mix today as well. And then on the side, I'm just gonna do a garden veggie mix. I often just grab a little of this and a little of that, steam it up, strain it, add some butter, salt and pepper, and it's delicious. Um, pretty much the whole family loves just a whole mix of cooked vegetables from the garden. So I'll be gathering some radishes. We still have some bush beans. Uh, lots of tomatoes coming in now, so we'll add in those after everything's cooked, just so they don't turn into mush. <laughs> and then I might throw in some onion too, we'll see.
Looks like we've got some pole beans over here as well, so I'm gonna add those to the bush beans, and I think I should have gotten a bigger bowl. That's a huge one. We didn't really have a good onion harvest this year at all, but I do have a few little ones. Um, we're just kind of using up the last of our onions right now. Unfortunately, um, I think because of flooding, a lot of the onion just didn't turn out this year. Hopefully next year we'll have better onion harvest. All right, I took the radish tops off. Um, they are very nutritious and sometimes we do eat the greens from the radishes, but this time of year they're really buggy and so I just toss those into the bucket that's going to the geese. We like to feed our geese that are in the pen right now um, greens every day, so they'll love that. Um, and I'm just gonna chop these up and put them in the bottom of the pan. And the way I do mixed vegetables is I put the ones that needs the longest to cook in the bottom and then go up from there. So today I'm gonna put the radishes on the bottom and then the beans in the middle and the onions on the top. And then I just put a little bit of water in the bottom of the pan and kind of steam them that way until the veggies are all nice and tender. Then I'll strain the water, add some butter, some salt, some pepper, and um, probably some diced tomato at the very end and mix it all together. Does that sound good? Yeah. <laughs> hey, yes. hey Kisses! Pulling weeds. What you doing, Biddle? Giving maybe some play food. Giving maybe some play food? Yeah. <laughs> this moss rock pathway through the apples has stayed pretty weed free through the summertime. We had to weed it a bunch in the spring, but it's doing really well now. Maybe it's just getting out here on the area where we haven't got rock yet, huh? Yeah. Lots of weeds where there's no rocks yet. What are you doing back here, Esther Pie? Picking up my garden a little bit. Yeah, she has been doing a great job adding some fresh compost and pulling out the weeds in her beautiful garden back here. She's got some incredible dahlias. It's looking so good back here, sweetheart. Thank she's you. got this area, all this was filled with weeds, so she cleared it out and put some fresh soil in. It's looking fantastic. Thank you. Ooh, those are pretty. Do you know what kind of flower that is? No. Those are asters. Yeah. Say aster? Aster. <laughs> this is just full of pollinators. All kinds of little bees and things. This variety is called Aroma, I believe. What you up to, Jay Bud? Well, I'm trying to see if I can ride this bike. Yeah? And, and see what the problem is with that pipe that we get that's a good idea. Whose bike is this? Um, Kit Kale. Kit Kale said that I could help the cabin if I could. 
This is Caleb's little bike. Yeah, he said that I could hopefully have it if I fix it. You just turned nine years old and bought yourself a super nice bike, huh? Mm-hmm. Why aren't you riding it? <laughs> well, actually, the tires popped on it. Yeah, you made some crazy trails through the woods and ended up popping the tire after yeah. just a few days, huh? Mm-hmm. And then you fixed it, and then it popped again, huh? Yeah. Good thing you like working on bikes, huh? <laughs> well, have fun. Alright, so I've got about six cups of mashed potatoes and I'm going to put in the equivalent of about 12 chicken eggs. So it's about two eggs per cup of mashed potatoes. And then I don't measure the spices. I'm just going to put in probably about a tablespoonish of salt, um, a sprinkling of garlic powder, some pepper, a very small amount of rosemary because the family likes the flavor but just as long as it's very light. Um, and that's about it. And then what I'm going to do is just use my pancake griddle, melt some butter on it, and spread about half of this mixture out all over that griddle. And I let it cook for a while. And then I cut, use a spatula to cut it up into patties and flip them to cook them on the other side. And I'll do that twice. It'll make us about 18 patties total, which is just about perfect for our family. Welcome, enjoy! Ooh, that looks lovely. <laughs> enjoy! Thanks, honey. How was your morning? It was good. Yeah, we got some good building done. Awesome. <laughs> Alright guys, hey, if you have a good recipe to use for leftover mashed potatoes, can you share it in the comments below? Thank you guys for watching. Before we go, I'm going to actually check in with both Caleb and Josh. They both have some announcements for you, so let's go check in with them. Alright, so here's Josh guys. Uh, last week I gave the big announcement that this channel, Homestead Living, is going to be going back to Thousands of Roots. So all of the videos on this channel we're going to slowly upload onto Thousands of Roots channel and we'll just be one big happy channel again. <laughs> so I wanted you to hear Josh's perspective on all of that so that you know that we're not taking over his channel. <laughs> um, and it's a good thing in the end. I think it'll work, work out really well. Yeah, so lately with YouTubing, I've just been a bit stressed out because I cannot make a video every week. I just don't have the time to do that. So now Mommy and Daddy will still be making a video every week on this channel, and I will make a video when I can. Yeah, so you can still get all of our content, but it'll just be in one place. That'll simplify it for you guys as well. So the way it's going to work is probably beginning next week, just be putting one or two videos from Homestead Living over to Thousands of Roots. So if you are a Homestead Living viewer, please go over to Thousands of Roots. Make sure you subscribe there and feel free to watch all the videos over again as they go over to Thousands of Roots. That will help us out. <laughs> and if you've already seen the videos, we still will be posting new videos over there as well. Yeah, so Josh is a really busy guy. He's got a lot on his plate right now. We actually have just kind of handed over management of our homestead to him because Kip has to be off the homestead so much. It's been um, too hard for him to manage and I can't manage it all. So I'm really excited and blessed that Josh has stepped up and he wants to help manage this homestead. So he's not going to have as much time to do the videoing, but he does so well at producing videos. So he is still going to be producing videos over on Thousands of Roots when he can. 
just got dripped on. <laughs> and we still plan on posting about a video per week over on thousands of roots as well. And then, like I said, we'll be moving about one or two videos per week from homestead living over to thousands of roots. Uh, so that's the plan for now. Uh, please, if you haven't subscribed to Thousands of Roots, go on over and subscribe. We really hope this change is going to be for the good of everyone. It'll make things simpler for you. You'll have all of our family content in one place again. We'll be able to be more interactive on the comments because uh, we won't have two channel comments to keep up with. And so I'm excited. I'm excited for this new chapter in our lives. I'm excited to keep sharing this journey of building this homestead with you all over on Thousands of Roots. And now Caleb, he's got an announcement. Uh, Caleb has a real heart for finding ways to bring in financial income for building this homestead. Those of you who don't know, our three oldest boys uh, really feel like this is their home and this is their homestead. It's their inheritance and they are just really taking hold of it. They do plan on building their own homes here on the, this 20 acres but they've really also taken ownership of everything that we have been putting in place just right here around this home. So if Yeshua tarries, this will likely be the place where they raise their families. And so Caleb has been trying to come up with ways to bring in finances. He's been working really hard on a store that's hopefully gonna be open in the next couple of weeks on our Thousands of Roots website. Uh, but he also found something else really cool that um, he would like to invite you guys to join him in. And so I'm going to let him explain that to you. Hey guys, I've been doing a bit of research lately on uh, passive income streams to help fund this homestead and help this homestead. And I've recently found something that I think is a good opportunity for both us and also you guys as our viewers. It's called Honey Game. It's a free app which you can get on both your mobile and PC devices. And you basically get paid a small amount each day for letting it run in the background. And don't worry, it doesn't use any of your personal information. It's actually to help businesses out. If you want more information on it, you can check out our website, which we should have a link for you down in the description for that. And if you think you already understand it enough, or just don't really care, just want to support us, you can join uh, me through the link in the description below. And every little bit helps when we're building a homestead, so we'd really appreciate um, for you to consider it, and thank you for your time and for your support. All right guys, you can also check out this video for more information on Honey Gain. <laughs> also, this video will take you over to Thousands of Roots. If you're not a subscriber over there, please subscribe. Thank you as always to our patrons for making these videos possible. We appreciate you so much. Uh, until next time, we pray blessings over you and yours. Whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. We'll see you over on Thousands of Roots. <laughs>